So Tom Bill Yu on his podcast uh, talked with Destiny. After Destiny's remarks that were after the uh, attempt at Donald Trump's life and the, the ending of that fireman's life. And, I mean, look the comments up for yourself if it's still online. If they're not, just know they were pretty bad. Uh, it's not a destiny problem in my view. It's a whole left wing problem because every left winger I know at the level I would call something more than an acquaintance except for one has endorsed or encouraged or applauded or needed me in some cases even to agree that it's good that there is violence against the right wing the right wing bleh, from the left and I didn't agree with the one that did that but like ugh. we're in a place that I think I need to bring something to light that is an off tangent thing that could really help. So we look at the human condition in different ways, right? Like one way is stoicism. Uh, Tom Bill Yu has a very, I would argue, psychological approach towards dissecting how we think about things and how we are and how we act and what we do. And it's great. It's a great approach. Stoicism is great too. But these things all can't do everything. And you have to find where the limits are and not go past the limits, you know? So like with Stoicism, we can get up early and exercise and have good habits and do hard things that are what we would want to do, but they're hard together and become better people and more capable. And that's wonderful. That's all. Stoicism is great there. And then we diverge as people. Maybe I want to do one thing with my life. I want to look into researching how to advance technology or something. And you want to do something totally different with your life. Like you maybe you want to be an artist. Okay. Okay. Well, this is not the time for me to say, aren't you a stoic? You know, that's your feelings. They're stupid. Let's work together towards my dreams and technology. No, then stoicism has to end there. It can still be a part of your life, but not there you get to be an artist and whether or not I agree maybe your art will have more impact in the world than my technology in your opinion and maybe that'll be what makes you happy in life and that's important no matter how much I want to make it about stoicism because I like you around and I want you to be there as we work towards my goal you know it, it, it ends it, it's over at that point and if, if I were to push that <laughs> I would expect you to not let me be stoic around you. You know what I mean? Like, no, because I know where you're going with that. Yeah, I know. We, we exercise in the morning or whatever. That's That was great until you ruined it. <laughs> with That I shouldn't have my own life. Like Stoicism limits, but great. Okay. Tom... And I've been in a kind of the area like this too, but different. He's looking in a very psychological approach, very much thinking about the human condition and the human mind and how we approach things and how we feel and how we think and, and how we are. Trying to keep things on the rails with people and go in good directions with people. A thing about Tom Bill Yu I like, he'll see there's a problem with a person he cares about in his mind, there's a problem. The other person won't agree, of course. And in the conversation, he'll carry the weight of the problem so they can see that it matters to him, but he won't foist it upon them in a way to demand anything. So they get to take their own actions and decide their own situation and be their own self. And I think that's beautiful. There are times that's very necessary and wonderful. And I don't have it that way. I... I've tried doing that and I, I'm not, I can like, I can be in that space and I can help people a little bit in that, but it's not like he would do it. it I let them go against my values in ways that aren't, I don't know. I'm not made to do that. Okay. 
I'm not made to do that. But in the area that I was in, I found the limit for me of this kind of a psychological thinking. Might not be Tom's, but it's mine. I would look at typology. I would look at personality types of people. I found, for example, that INTJs, like three fourths of them basically can't apologize if they do something offensive or wrong or hurt someone. They, they can know it's wrong and they can try to do better in the future and move in a way that tries to solve the problem going forward. But if you want them to go back and relive and apologize, oh no, a lot of them can't do it. And as I explored the thought of that INTJs can't apologize, because most of them seem not to be able to, I went further and further in with my mind and I realized more, 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 I'm excusing this thing that causes problems and I'm rationalizing that I'm not excusing it, I'm just understanding it. If it's just me and an INTJ talking and they said something, you know, pretty offensive, there was a point in time where it's like, okay, you know, that's how they think. And I'm cool with that because I know it's a, it seems to be a limit they have and it seems to be stressful for them not to, and I want to let them be happy. But then another person comes into the room and they say something offensive that hurts the other person. And then I would like 180 because no, no, that's, that's not me. They don't know. They don't have the ideology and the thoughts I have that make this okay. You're hurting them. And then I would be, you know, I would look fake maybe or whatever. Right. Cause I could only carry it so far. And I realized like, yeah, there's personal flaws. Yeah, we should care about people and understand them 100%. But there's also like a line. Okay? If you really can't apologize when you offend people, then you'll never understand to them how they were offended. You'll never be able to see if your apology meshes with how they feel. You'll never know how they are. You'll never understand. And you'll never grow into a person that won't do that to people, you know? And I'm looking at it like, what about the seven deadly sins? There's a deadly sin called pride. And I looked and I thought, of the INTJs I've seen that can apologize, they may seem very brash, they may talk in a way that exudes an aesthetic of arrogance, but the ones that can apologize, and they're good about that, they're not actually proud in a sinful way. Like, when they have to do something that a proud person wouldn't do, but they, it's the right thing to do, they do it. And the ones that can't apologize don't do it. And try and scheme and plot and demean and lower other people like they're less than me, so they should do it. And weird things. And those are the ones that can't apologize. So... I looked at pride in a lot of personality types and it's differently shaped in each one, it seemed like, and with different problems and different situations. I really, in a, in a little bit, I augmented the sins based on the personality types for a little bit. And that's been a fun journey that I went down. But the seven deadly sins, the idea of pride is a way dealing with the idea of an INTJ that gives it a gravity and brings it down to earth a bit. So just because you're a personality type doesn't mean you get to never apologize. There's a problem with that. And it's not healthy, even if it's convenient for you or harder for you or whatever. It needs that. And I look at destiny. What do you think destiny's sin is? I think it's wrath. And I think it's growing in destiny. Uh, this is all a hypothetical story I'm making here. I'm not following exact instances in Destiny's life. The ending part is not hypothetical because it happened. <laughs> but, like, I would imagine that Destiny was, like, a normal, kind, friendly, fun person. And then he started debating people. And then at one point, maybe, um, he was debating someone and made a very valid point that anyone would understand. And this person was like trying to not understand it as important as it was. 
And Destiny had to get a little bit upset as he said it. You know, he's starting to grow the idea of how his wrath works. Because that's not fair. This is more important than that. And he makes it more important. And the person concedes, perhaps, or the audience concedes that the person's being unreasonable. So he won through the audience or whatever, you know. And that's good. He won the debate. It was actually right that he won the debate in that case because the other person was being unreasonable and, and wonderful. And then that keeps happening, you know, and whenever, now he knows whenever someone does that, he can just invoke a little bit more, right? Get those longer arms a little bit and those shorter legs, as he says. Um, so then later on, maybe there's a debate that happens and um, the other side actually should win the debate. But Destiny knows for his cause, he really needs to win the debate in his mind. For his cause. So now we're being duplicitous, which is not a deadly sin, but that kind of manipulation is a modern day thing to look for. Manipulation, duplicity with all the deadly sins. Because people use them in ways that try to not look like it is what it is. Like, um, I don't know. There's a lot of racism in the world, do not get me wrong. But I have seen people that are, they're, they're delicate people, you know? I knew a guy who was black, and he was a great person, but delicate. And he had a job, and he was late to his job, and his white boss had a talk with him. And I overheard, you know, it's just, you know, you gotta be on time. Just basic, nothing racist, nothing hateful, but it hurt the guy. Okay, it hurt him. He was hurt. And in the right world, that could have been a thing that you take care of, perhaps, in certain ways. And you could do better to help a person not be hurt like that. But, you know, his boss is white, and he called his boss a racist. That's wrath right there. And it's disguised, because he's not trying to act outwardly wrathful he was trying to be the victim and he's being sad and hurt but it's just the goal is to destroy his boss because he was 17 minutes later whatever it was and he, the kid can't it hurts him to be called out it hurts him to be called out you know people that do that it, sometimes you need a crutch. But if you don't honestly confront problems, you'll never solve them. So, with Destiny, um, he's using wrath. And maybe, in this case, he's angry towards the point he's making. The other side should win the debate, really, and he has a weak point, and he's being very angry about the point to give it that boost with his wrath. And he wins the debate. You know, wrath helps again. Selling your soul a little bit more. Because A, the other side should have won this hypothetical debate, and B, you're starting to learn how you can make a point mean more than it means, which is, which is like a little bit unreasonable and dishonest. Like, what does it mean to you? You know it wasn't good enough, so you invoked wrath to make it stronger. If you were being honest, you say, this matters a bit, but not a lot, but it's here. And instead you're like, this is up here. So misdirecting, and we can't see what your actual points are for what they are. Can we trust at that point that, okay? So like the next time it grows after a while of this stuff going on. Maybe it's at a point Destiny is studying all the talking points, knows every angle of the debate that he's going into. He wants to win for the left, right? He doesn't care how. He's literally said he doesn't care, you know, whatever you'll agree with so that I win. It's his mindset, which I think in time he'll look back at that and feel very bad because you want to talk with people and not just defeat everyone. You want to humanize people and not think of them as a number. Um, well, so in this example, in this mythological debate I'm making up here, 
Destiny made his good points, and the opponent says something, and Destiny can see the way they're packing this point. It, they know what the point is. He knows what it is, but it was he didn't think of it that way. And in the angle the person's going to come with this point, it's going to crush him. But maybe if Destiny rats it up, he can deflect and manhandle this person to a point. They can't get the point out properly. And then he can interrupt them and get his way and he wins. Is he winning through being correct in this case? No, he's winning through wrath. Should this hypothetical destiny that I've made up think I want to win more? No, he should think they made some valid points or we're going to and I should learn. And a better version of this hypothetical destiny would be like, hey, the debate's fun. Let's just listen to their actual point in its entirety, the way they would say it and not interrupt them. And I could learn even more and be even better as a person. But no, I want to be a debater for my side. Because Wrath is slowly whittling away at the soul of this person. So then, you know, you see Destiny really caring about the left, really wanting all this good stuff going on, win the campaign, win the debate, win everything. And a person takes a, a go at Donald Trump and uh, removes a, a fireman from this world. <laughs> what is Destiny thinking in his mind? So a healthier version of this hypothetical, I don't, I, I'm not a mind reader, right? I don't know Destiny's mind, but it feels to me like a healthy person would be thinking, that's terrible. That person didn't deserve that. This is awful. And we did this. And can we examine why this happened? Can we examine, do we have influences on our side that push people to this level of extremism? Oh. We should make sure the other side knows this is not who we are and who we want to be. Because the political discourse in this country relies upon people knowing it's safe to voice their opinions. You know, a, like a really good person would be thinking in that kind of an angle. But if destiny hypothetically, is being eaten alive by the sin of wrath, and he keeps just buying in more and more, eating a curse, he's probably thinking more of the tune of, we have to win the election no matter what. Um, this is going to slow down campaigning and be, you know, a thorn in the side of the left. And how could I make it go away? What happened here? Who knows why? Maybe so they can campaign more, Maybe so they can take another go at what the kid was trying to do. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe both. Maybe whatever. Maybe just win, win, win. Maybe all it's taking is win, 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 win. And the wrath is there. It's so simple to just say, hey, wrath, let's do it. And then he's out there blaming a fireman who was protecting his family. Or losing his life because destiny well I don't know you look at it for yourself and decide but I feel that that's what he was doing he's scornfully going out there and making it he's attacking a person for that happening to them what is he trying to achieve here in my opinion with this view of the word wrath is if he can aesthetically make it look like he's mad and it's the fireman's fault, you know? Then that means to people that fall for the wrath trick, he gets to win, and most people do. So now Destiny has aesthetically contoured things such that all that just happened barely even matters at all and we can move forward with campaigns with other things maybe with whatever whatever and the left has a better go because destiny sold his soul to wrath but who is he now destiny you know well he's the person that would do that the person that doesn't care about human life and just wants to win um, it's not the best position to be in.
you see why you might sometimes need this angle? And the problem is, you get some Bible-beating preacher to come in here. <laughs> he would tear destiny limb from limb with the whole idea of a sin. And he wouldn't have any psychological help. Like, how can you, as you, face this and fight this? How can you, as destiny, as who you are, understand and address and identify and see and consider this? It'll just be like, that's wrath. You're going straight to the fires of hell. You know, like, well, it is wrath. Well, what I do, honestly, when I hear a person, Destiny or someone like Destiny, in a debate at this point in time, I've evolved to make it worse. But, like, my original thing was, I know Destiny knows all the variables. And when I hear Destiny get all wrathy, I just think... The other side clearly has a point Destiny's talking over. I will award them that point. <laughs> and after a while, I thought, I don't even know how big that point is. I'll award them two points. Because in some cases, he would get real uh, over what felt like nothing to me. He would get real upset deflecting and splashing the waters to, to steer things in his direction to look like he wins. And sometimes I'm sure Destiny does win. You know, he's a smart guy. The left has a fair amount of solid arguments in many areas. So I'm sure sometimes Destiny really does win debates. But how can you even tell when we're doing this game to beat the other side this way? And I use my judgment too. Like if he's talking with someone from like Fresh and Fit, you know, they don't get as many free points from Destiny's Wrath. I, I'll be honest. I will just be honest, okay? But with most cases I've seen here, if it's political and Destiny gets all full of wrath, at this point, I just turn it off and give the other side the win. I don't watch Destiny that much, so don't think it's a huge deal. Uh, I watch it maybe like once a month, once every two months. But with other people too, is my point. You know, I see other people get all that way, click. People in the real world get that way with me, I just walk away. They go, what are you, what are you doing? You're being a douchebag. <laughs> Bye. You know, and then there you go. There you go. Um, I want people in politics that care about human life. And I know this is tricky because I'm sure in Destiny's eyes, with what he's doing, he thinks his side is so great and the other side so bad, that even in this example of what he's done, he is doing it because he cares about human life. So I can't even say that, right? Because in Destiny's view, that won't be correct. I guess I can say, I want people that in regard to the seven deadly sins, not that anyone's perfect, mind you, but are doing their best to master themselves and have victories over themselves in this way. And they value that over free wins versus others. And I want people that humanize the other side. And I want people that play fair. And that's what politics should be.